In this AutoCAD demo video, I would like to talk about the basics of using standard text in AutoCAD. So when we're talking about text, first of all, you'll see on the Home tab on the ribbon here, we do have some annotation options here in the middle. And that's an okay place to start, but really I think it's much better to go to the Expanded menu if we go to the Annotate tab here on the ribbon. You'll see that we actually have more options, and that's a better place to start in my opinion. So once we get here, we're going to be focusing on this left side where it's talking about text. And you'll see we have a drop-down panel that, panel that gives you a little bit more. Okay, and what we're going to be working on in this video is the standard text. With text and dimensioning, we have the option to do standard or annotative is the other one I'm really going to be talking about. So standard or annotative. They're, they're very different in the way they work, so I'm going to be talking about them separately. So with standard text, what we need to think about is how big this is going to be on our screen versus how big this is going to be when we print. If you do a simple Google search for a scale factor sheet for AutoCAD, you'll be able to find something that looks like this, and this is going to be incredibly useful. So in terms of how standard text works, we need to think about the drawing scale we're going to print at and then how big that we we want that text to be when we print. This is very much like a multiplication table. So here on the left we have the drawing scales. So if I'm doing a floor plan, an elevation, whatever it might be, I need to know what I'm going to print it at. So will it be an eighth inch equals a foot, a quarter inch equals a foot, a half inch, and so on. Then I need to determine how big I want that text to be when it's plotted and I'm holding it in my hands. Uh, you know, do I want it to be a sixteenth, an eighth, a quarter, and that's going to depend on the type of text you're using, if it's body text, titles, uh, you know, that type of thing. I'm going to work right now with something very simple. So I'm going to say that I want to print my drawing at an eighth inch equals a foot. And then up across the top, I'll say that I want my text to be three thirty seconds of an inch when I actually print it. So if I follow that down and then the eighth inch equals a foot across, you'll see I get the number nine. That means that in my AutoCAD drawing, when I create the text, I want it to be nine inches tall so that when I print it at an eighth inch equals a foot, it will actually be three thirty seconds of an inch tall, physically printed. Okay, so I'm going to do mine at nine. So it's very much like a multiplication table that you follow one side over, the other side down. So back here in my drawing, let's play around with that text a little bit. So in my annotate tab on the left here in the text panel, Besides simply standard, we have multi-line and single line. So we can do multi-line text for things like paragraphs, something that's bullet pointed, you know, something that has more text to it. And we could use single line for um, titles, labels, that kind of thing where it's a bit shorter perhaps. We can do these individually, or we could actually set up a text style, and that can be kind of nice. To do a text style, it's one of those little um, angled arrows in the lower right-hand corner of that panel that lets us do a style. Once I get in here, I'll see that I have annotative and standard like I mentioned, but I don't want to really mess around too much with that generic standard one that Cat has. What I want to do is actually create a new one. So with that highlighted even, I can say new over here on the right, and I'll give it a name. So maybe I'll name it standard nine or something like that, you know, whatever makes sense for you. So I'll just say standard nine. And then under font, I actually have a lot of options here. You know, the older versions of CAD didn't give you a lot of options, but, um, you know, this one will actually let you use all the fonts that you have on your computer, which is pretty nice. I'll just pick something really simple like um, Arial, for example. Uh, but you know, feel free to play around. And then you'll see that the font style will actually let you change between bold and italic and regular and so on, just based on the abilities of that font. So some will have more options here than others. 
We do not want to make this annotative, okay, because we're going to be getting into that into a different video. So here, here's a good place to actually say the height. I wouldn't have to do it here, but saying 9 inches here, uh, we'll kind of have that as the default, so I could do that. We have other options down below under the effects, such as being upside down, or backwards, or even vertical in some cases. And we can play with the width factor and angle if you want. So these are all personal things you can do. The width factor above one will make it wider, below one will make it narrower. So if I said three there, you'll see it stretches out. And the oblique angle will give it just that, that angle tweak if, for example, you wanted it to look a little bit more um, like it was handwritten, that kind of thing. I'll say apply when I'm happy with my changes, and I could keep going through here and, and tweaking them. And I could even say set current, and that will hopefully set my new style to current, although if it doesn't, I can just change that once I'm working. Then I'll say close. Once I've done that, it does actually say standard 9 up here, so that's good. That will be the font that I'm working with. And now I will do the multi-line text. And when you do multi-line text, you'll see that it gives you a little ABC on your cursor. I will click and drag, and this is creating a text box, so very similar to Word or PowerPoint, that type of thing. So now I could just do some basic text. I will say, this is my new text. If I hit enter, it will just start a new sentence, you know, very standard stuff. I'll do enter again. and I can keep going. And if I hit enter again, you'll see that it's just giving me a space. So once you're happy with your text, all you need to do is click outside of it or say close text editor, either way, and it will be there. Now notice that that's pretty easy to read. Okay, if I scroll in, recall that this wall is about five inches thick and that makes sense. In proportion, these letters are about nine inches tall. So if I scroll out, I can actually read that and see it. That's multi-line text. If I click on that text, you'll see it all highlights as one object. If I double click on it, I can actually go in and edit it. So if I wanted to come in and say, you know, this is the second line of my new text, comma, I really like, whoa, like it. I can do that. Then I can either click outside of it or I could have hit that X for the closed text editor. But either way, you'll see that I can go in and either click on it once to activate it or double click to get in there and do some editing. So I can either click outside or say closed text editor. This is all one thing. So if I click on this, I could certainly go to the Home tab and say Move, for example, and I could just move that around. It's a basic object. That is multi-line text. If I wanted to do single line text, you'll see that I click on the split button and say, sure, single line text. This is just a little bit different. I don't actually create a text box like I do uh, with multi-line text, uh, very similar to other programs. I click where I want the text to start, and then Kaz asking me what's the rotation angle. I could certainly put in an angle here, uh, but I'd like to keep mine at zero. So I hit enter, and now I start typing my text live, and you'll see that I just have this flashing cursor. So I can start typing. This is single line text, period. Now, if I hit enter, it looks like multi-line text and it looks like it's creating um, kind of a text box. Okay, but if I type something,
hit enter again, and one more time, you'll see that once I get out of it, it's actually two separate things. So the first line is separate from the second line, so they're not all connected. To make it a little more obvious, if I say move, for example, click on that single line text, they're separate things. Whereas the first text that I did, the multi-line text, it's all connected. I can still double click on my single line text to get inside of it and do some basic edits. So if I want to get rid of the word text, for example, I can click in there and then just click outside of it uh, to move on. So they're very, very easy to work on and change. If I go back to the annotate tab, you'll see that you can also do things like check spelling and so on. So that's really the basics of it. If I wanted to create a, another text style, I can simply click this little arrow. I could say new. I'll call this standard um, 12, for example. Say OK. I will give it, um, let's see, a, a different font so that we can actually see a difference. I'll say it's 12 inches this time. I could change the width factor, for example, to make it a little more obvious. I'll apply that, set current, and close. And now I could do some multi-line text first. Okay, and once again, I can click outside of it or say close text editor. So here's my new multi-line text. It's all one thing. And if I did single line text, I can click where I want it to start. And here, if just to illustrate the point, I could say the rotation angle is, for example, 30 degrees, if that's something I wanted to do. And now if I type, it will actually be at an angle. I just hit enter twice to get out of there and now I could for example move that away so we can read it if you eventually wanted to change the angle of something you've already done don't forget that this is still an object within AutoCAD so I could certainly go to the home tab click on the text rotate it pick a base point and actually rotate my text later. Uh, so you're not stuck. It's still um, something that you can modify. And really, when it comes down to it, that's the basics. You need to simply remember that you have to check the drawing scale, know the height that you want it printed at when you're all done. Then when you're in CAD, you can basically just set up a textile and then pick between multi-line or single line text. And then once you're done, all you have to do is click on it to get in there and actually do some basic edits, just like you do in other programs. That is standard text.